good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. Welcome to Mavuno Church. If you're watching us online, if you're watching us on Switch TV, we love you. Thank you for doing church with us today. Yeah. And if you have made it this far, this is the last day of our fast. So it's about endurance. You've done great. It's about perseverance because we're chasing after God. So get up on your feet and bounce with me side to side. Persevere and chase after you all the way to the finish. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'ma say it again. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. Join me in singing. I'm chasing. After you. No matter what, no matter what I have to do, I need, I need you more and more. Lord, I'm chasing after I'm you. Chasing after you. No matter what, no matter what I have Lift to those do. legs. I need you more and more. Everybody sing. Everybody sing more and more, more and more. Jesus, we need you more and more, more and more. In my life, Lord, more and more, more and more. In my family, more and more, more and more, more and more. More and more. We cry out to you. More and more. 
more and more. More and more. Yes, Lord. We needed you at the beginning of our time of prayer, consecration, and fasting. And even now as we're at the end, we need you even more. We desire to see you do things in us, through us, and around us. Lord, we thank you that we make these prayers of faith not from a place of defeat or hopelessness, but from a place of victory. For Lord God, you are the champion. You are the champion. We have declared this all through the month and we will continue to sing that Lord, you are our victor. And we thank you that you have invited us into that victory. Yes, Lord. I've tried so hard to see it. it took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Affection could never earn it To give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won, I am who you say. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Join us and sing together. Now I can finally see it. Now I can finally see it. You're teaching me. You're teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving see. My victory. This is my victory. You are my champion. Giants. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am. I am who you say I am. You crown me. You crown me with confidence. In the heavenly place undefeated With the one With the one who has conquered it all. That thing that you are trusting the Lord for The Lord is faithful and just to answer every prayer He is good, He is perfect And He is victorious And we can declare this in faith Knowing this to be true when I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me it. When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking down I have the authority, yes I do, Jesus has given me, yeah. when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down, I have the authority, yes I do, Lord Jesus has given me. Champion Giants Giants fall when you stand 
undefeated Every battle you won I am I am who you say I am You crown me You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place Undefeated By the power By the power of your name I am seated In the heavenly Yes, Lord, you have conquered it all. You have conquered it all. And today, as we are at the last day of our fast, God, as a community of faith, the Mavuno family, we tell you thank you for sustaining us. The Lord, you have reminded us that we do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from your mouth, Heavenly Father. Thank you that it is your word, your instruction that has sustained us. When we pray, give us today our daily bread. We are saying, God, we cannot live without the instruction that comes from your mouth, Heavenly Father. So Lord God, I pray even now for everyone who's under the sound of my voice, that Lord, you would begin to breathe new life into them. That Lord, you'll begin to breathe new life into their situations. That the things that were not, we call them as if they were. The things that were dead, that you are bringing them back to life in the name of Jesus. The miracle signs and wonders that we are trusting you for. The Lord, we will begin to see them. Lord God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. And we believe that you have done it. We put our trust and our hope and our faith and we fix our gaze on you, Jesus. And we pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes, I do, Lord. Jesus Christ. how we do it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Where are you watching from in the world? We're so glad you're here and that you're on, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or you're at home with friends watching on Switch TV, we're so, so excited that we can actually worship God together. And as you notice, this is a month to be champions. Uh, every one of us is a champion and our series title is Like a Champion. And you know, one of the things we're celebrating today is this is the end of our 21-day fast. Uh, today, the last day, and my goodness, you've come through it. Look at your neighbor, they're still alive, they made it. Uh, my goodness, God is so faithful, God is so good. And as you've been praying and trusting God, I want to speak over your life right now. Everything you've trusted God for, everything you've been waiting on God for, may you live to see it come to pass. May God surprise you and amaze you and go before you in the year 2021. My goodness, the month has just begun. I don't believe this is the end, I think this is just the beginning of the great things that God has for you and has for us together as we walk into this year. Now, next Sunday, I want to share some testimonies from you. And so if you have a testimony uh, of something that God has done over this time of fasting and prayer, uh, please send it to us, put it online, uh, on, the, on the timeline right now, as even as we're, we're, we're going through this message, or you can send it to us by email. But you know, you can use just hashtag uh, 4521. Hashtag 4521, and I'd love to read some of your testimonies next week as we uh, just trust God, as we excite, uh, celebrate God 
for the great things that he has done. Now, this is uh, round four of our series, and we conclude it next week. And this week, I want to talk about persistence of a champion, persistent like a champion, because we've been talking about qualities, the five mindsets that you must have as a champion. We've been looking at the healing miracles of Jesus just to see what are some of the qualities of people who want to be healed. What are some of the qualities of champions? And so I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 10. We're going to be reading uh, verse 46 to 52. There's a great story there about a man who was healed by Jesus. And I love this story. Uh, Mark 10, 46 to 52. Let's read it together. It says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. And the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, say Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, Mark begins this story with an extremely brief description of a stopover in the city of Jericho. Jesus and his disciples on their way to Jerusalem, stop over in Jericho. It's completely forgettable because they just say in one verse, he talks about the fact that Jesus stopped over. The next verse, Jesus is leaving. You don't even understand anything that Jesus did. It would have been a completely forgettable visit if not for this one guy, this one guy called Bartimaeus. Now, interesting, the thing that you want to note about this name, this is the only person healed by Jesus in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke the only person whose name we know that was healed. All the rest, they're called a leper. They're called the man who was possessed by demons. They're called whatever. This is the only person whose name we know. And why is that? Part of the reason some people think is because he maybe became a part of the early church that this disciple was writing to. So when the disciples of Jesus were writing, uh, when Mark was writing the story of, of, of Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus was actually one of the guys who was reading the story. He was known in the church. He was somebody who was already connected. And the interesting thing is, actually, in the end of the story, he gives his life to God. He, begins, he becomes a follower of Jesus. So it would not be unlikely that they were writing to somebody who was actually known in the community. But whatever the reason, this man was found by Jesus in a terrible shape. I don't remember whether you know or you remember where you are when Jesus first found you. But this man was in a terrible shape when Jesus found him. There was fa he was facing several different crises. The first is a health crisis. I mean, but, 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 but Timaeus was visually impaired. He couldn't see. His world was one of darkness. He couldn't see trees. He couldn't see clouds. He couldn't see people passing by. He couldn't see the smile of children as they walked by him. His disability left him disadvantaged. And some of you right now, as you're listening to this message, you know what it is to have a health condition that leaves you disadvantaged, whether it's a, a breathing condition, a respiratory issue, whether it's a physical ailment somewhere, whether it's a mental condition, you know what it means to be in a health crisis. Some of you, it's COVID over 2020, you got infected and you have the long kind that takes a long time to recover. And some of you know exactly what it means to just have a debilitating health condition. The second crisis that this man was facing was an economic crisis. We are told he was a beggar. There were no schools for visually impaired children back in those days. There were no careers you could enter into if you were blind. And so this man, we're told that he had to beg to survive. He had been reduced to begging on the roadside, waiting on the goodness of bystanders to make his life continue. And some of you right now, you're facing an economic crisis because of different things that happened last year or the year before or before that. You are going through a situation where you don't know where your next meal will come from, where you don't know where your family, your children's school fees will come from. You're going through an economic crisis where you don't even know how you're going to make ends meet. And you identify with this man who didn't know how to survive. He was just living day by day. The third crisis that this man was facing was an emotional crisis. You know, just like today, back in the day, begging was one of the most humiliating ways to make a living. I mean, this man, all he could do is just walk around 
and look at people hoping they would have pity on him. And people would throw their, their leftovers, their scraps. They would, they, would, they would basically just, he would be an object of other people's pity on his best day. And this man, he basically was at the place where he was labeled. People call him the blind beggar. And it's very interesting because at that point, he carried a label. Some of you know exactly what it means to carry a label. Uh, you're a widow, or people call you the orphan, or divorced, or disabled, or abused, or addicted, or broke. You carry a label, and you are identified by your condition. And perhaps you've even come to see yourself as part of that condition. That is a part of your identity. This man was carrying emotional scars from the, the things he had gone through. And then lastly, he was facing a social crisis. You know, being blind meant he was on his own. There was nobody there to help him. He was sitting by the roadside the whole day, spending that time in the darkness by himself. His life was one long quarantine, and everybody social distanced from them. This is, this is what happens sometimes. People see you in a difficult situation. They social distance from you because they don't want to catch what you have. And this man was facing a social crisis. Many people who are listening to this, you're facing a social crisis right now. We went through this quarantine, this isolation of, of COVID-19, and some of you have lost loved ones. Some of you have been forced to stay alone. You've cut off from your friends. Relationships were pulled apart. And we found that many times families were left by themselves. There was an increase in addictions, in domestic violence, in child abuse, in divorce, in separation. That's the kind of year that 2020 was for many people. And you know, many times we just find ourselves crutching and surviving. In Kenya, we have this hashtag, Bora Uhai. You know, at least I'm still alive. And many of you, that's where you are right now. It's like, I'm still alive. I can hustle. I can scratch. It's one day at a time. And that's where Bart uh, Bartimaeus was. Except this one day, something different happened. This one day, somebody different happened. I don't know how he knew who Jesus was. Maybe he had had people murmuring as they passed by, whispering as they passed by. Maybe he just discovered that day who he was. But you know what? The Bible tells us as soon as he found out who was in that crowd that was passing him by, that Bartholomew went just, he just went crazy. This Bartimaeus guy began to scream at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And I mean, this guy, it's just like he lost it. He went berserk. And it's like he realized, I didn't even know the guy was in town. Now he's leaving. I don't know that he'll ever come back. This is my one chance. And God had better just do something about my situation. And you know, there are some of us who have faced so many issues that we're like Bart Bartimaeus. You've been tempted to give up. The obstacles before you have been too great. <laughs> the crisis you're facing right now is insurmountable. Maybe you've prayed through all of 2020 and you trusted God for a breakthrough, but nothing happened. Maybe you've even gone through 21 days of fasting and prayer. Maybe you even did the liquid fast and drank water only. But still, you haven't seen the breakthrough. And you're beginning to wonder, what's going on? Am I forgotten? It's so easy to be discouraged. But I want to speak to you right now from this passage. And I believe that God has a word for you. Wherever you are, if you've been feeling discouraged. And His word is, don't give up. Never give in. I like the fact that Bato, this is what happened. But Timaeus just would not give up. He would not give in. You know, there's some things you must keep on crying out to God for. There are some things that only you know the situation you're in. Your friends don't even understand. They see you dressed in the morning. They have no idea where you've come from. Your spouse doesn't quite understand the pain that you're carrying. Even your pastor has no clue what you're carrying. Only you can call out for yourself. And here's the thing. It's only you and God. You must never give up. You must never give in. And here's my, my encouragement. You must keep on praying. Even if the breakthrough comes next week, for some of us, it might come next year. For some of us, it might take a much longer time than that. But never give up. Don't give up. Never give in. Determine to seek God passionately. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who honestly please Him. And so don't give up. Never give in. God exists and He will reward you as you earnestly seek Him. And look what happens to Bartimaeus next. Verse 48 says, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Why were they discouraging him? Maybe Jesus was talking and they didn't want to miss a word of what he was saying. It's like, hush, you're distracting us. Maybe they were in a hurry to get to Jerusalem for the Passover. 
And they had already had too many interruptions. Like, no, 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 no more interruptions. Maybe they thought Bartimaeus was being unrealistic in his expectations. I mean, why would Jesus want to stop all he was doing just to spend time with a blind man, a blind beggar, a loud blind beggar? Maybe they were offended by his noise. And maybe some of them were offended by his condition. But whatever it was, they preferred him to just quietly mind his business, keep the status quo. But I love the fact that, you know, Bartimaeus would not give up. You know, when you decide to pursue God violently, passionately, with all your heart, persistently, don't be surprised when the people around you don't see what you're seeing. Don't be surprised by that. Even well-meaning believers, your friends, they look at you like you're crazy when they hear the magnitude of your faith. Even your spouse, your, your, your wife, your husband might just roll their eyes, might be like, man, you're being unrealistic in your expectations. Your, your best friend, your siblings might even discourage you when you start to share the things that you're trusting God for. People will tell you not to be a fanatic, not to be so unrealistic. Accept that condition is unchangeable. They plead with you to stop being unreasonable. Come on, stop bothering God. And you know, I wish I could say I was a person who could never, never do that. But I must confess, I've done that in my life and not once. I remember once when my wife and I were students in the US and God was so gracious to us, he had given us two scholarships. So I had a scholarship to study theology. And then Carol had a scholarship to study theology as well. Now, it's not what she went to the States to study. She wanted to study psychology. But when we landed, that's what we were given. And by, just by God's grace, I got a full tuition scholarship. She had 75% tuition scholarship. So, I mean, it's like, my God, God was so gracious to us as a family. And we finished our studies, and we were done. And then when Carol was finished, she said, look, I want you to trust God with me because I really believe God should, I, I'd like God to give me a, a scholarship to study psychology because that's what I came to study. And I remember telling her, come on, girl. <laughs> I mean, aren't you being unrealistic? God has given us two master's degrees. I mean, nobody, no other family has that. Let's not use our prayers to disturb God. I mean, I, I, I may not have said it in that way, but it's almost those ones of, come on, you're being unrealistic now. You're, you're bothering God. I think this is too much. And, and I, I, I poured cold water on her dream. I wish I could say I supported her. I wish I could say that I was there for her, but I, I truly discouraged her from seeking that thing because I just felt, look, God has been... It, you're bothering God. There's a point you've gotten to where you're bothering God. But you know, I love what the scripture teaches. Because when these people rebuked him, verse 48 says, many rebuked him, told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So it's like the, the more they shushed him, the louder he shouted. But Timaeus just refused to give up. He refused to be silenced by others. He, be, he refused to behave nicely. He refused to behave politely. He refused to be defined by what others thought he should think. He called out even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, this man had no plan B. It was either Jesus healed him or Jesus healed him. And what can we learn from Bartimaeus? I believe this is what God is saying to somebody here, somebody who's not experienced breakthrough yet, somebody who's been feeling discouraged, wanting to give up. Don't give up. Never give in. Don't give up. Never give in. See what happens to the man who doesn't give up. Mark writes, Jesus heard him. Verse 49, Jesus stopped and said, call him. So it's like Jesus heard him. There's a whole crowd of people. They're all loud. They're all making noise. But Jesus still hears this man in his persistence. And so they call to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. I love that. You know, the same people. You notice that? The same people who rebuked him. The same people who told him to be quiet. Now they're the ones who, when they've noticed God's favor in his life, now they're beginning to cheer him on. Now they're beginning to tell him, come on, Jesus has heard you. It's time for your healing. Listen to me. That's why you can't afford to listen to the crowd. That's why you can't afford to gauge your faith with the faith of those around you. There's some things that only you can have faith for. Come on, don't give up. Never give in. Some of you have family members who are drug or alcohol addicted. Everyone has given up on them. They've been labeled, they've been called things. And right now, everybody else is in the space where they've given up. Some of you have marriages that are in tatters, or friends around you or, or your relatives have marriages in tatters, 
holding together more on paper than in reality. Some of you are facing a roadblock in your health or in your education or in your career or in your finances. You got that doctor's report. The bank gave you that notice. You got your results and no school would ever take you. On paper, on paper, your situation is hopeless. But listen to me. There's a type of prayer that moves beyond begging God and moves into militancy. The type of prayer that holds on to God, that says, I'm in here for the, whole, for the long haul. Lord, I'm here to win this. There's a type of prayer that says, Lord, I'm holding on to you. I will not let you go until you bless me. I don't care, Lord, if it takes days. I don't care if it takes years. I don't care if it takes, if it takes decades. Lord, I am here. I'm in it to win it. And Lord, if you don't change this situation for me, then you're going to have to change me for this situation because I'm not quitting until something changes. I'm never going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm Tim Bartimaeus. Don't give up. Never give in. And see what happens next to this man. The Bible says, verse 50, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. I mean, this man had faith and confidence in Jesus because he threw it away. This cloak that had been his source of security, the place he sat, the thing that covered him, he threw it away. Some of you just need to throw away those fears, those things that have been holding on to you. Just throw them away right now. And, he said, and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Familiar? Because that's a question Jesus has asked everybody right now in all the miracles we've been reading. What do you want me to do for you? And, and Jesus wants you to be specific in your prayer. What are you asking me for? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. And verse 52, the words he'd been waiting for all his life. Go, say Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. <laughs> Remember my wife Carol and her impossible prayer? Well, she refused to be discouraged by her unbelieving husband. She prayed about it every day. She bothered. She told everybody she could about it. When people asked her what she was praying for, this was her prayer request. She just held on to God and would not let go. And you know what happened? I mean, just a few months after, after she began to pray, we're in church one Sunday, and it's after church. We're having coffee with a guy that we had seen. I mean, we just met him. And this guy asked us what we were trusting God for, what we were praying about. And she immediately talked about the fact that I've just done a master's and I'm trusting God for a second master's. I need a scholarship to do it. And of course, as a husband, I remember rolling my eyes like, seriously, give this a break. And the guy said, you know, the school you're trusting God for, it's called Fuller. That's the school we're going to. He said, it's a great school, but I know another school that also offers the same program. And many of the professors actually went to Fuller. It's called Azusa Pacific. And he said, I know that school and I know that they, have, they, are, they are better funded. They might even be able to give you the scholarship. I don't know. But he said, would you mind if you give me your address and I'll send you the prospectus and then you can apply and see what happens. And of course, I mean, my wife was like, yes. And she applied, she got, she, she gave him the address. A, a week later or so, we got in the mail a package, opened it and sure enough, it was a big prospectus. I mean, like a thick book that came from this school with all the different schools, all the different uh, schools in that university. And so I'm thumbing through and we're opening just to see School of Psychology, where is this school? And finally, we get to School of Psychology and every school has a big front page picture of the dean of the school, the head of the school. And guess what? We're looking at who the head, guess who the head of the school was? It was a guy that we sat next to in church. The guy who sent us a catalog. And the short story is that Carol applied and she got a 100% tuition scholarship. God had her prayer. God supplied her need. God heard the prayer of the woman who would not give up. Listen to me. Don't give up. Never give in. You know, I've said before, I've said it before, that this is a year of breakthrough. By the way, Mavuno, I don't just say this. this some of you think that I'm saying this to hype. This is the kind of thing pastors say at every beginning of the new year. That's the farthest thing from the truth. I truly believe that this is a year of breakthrough for this congregation. I believe that God is going to do some things that are going to spin, leave our heads spinning by the end of this year. I believe there are going to be some miracles in your family that you cannot even anticipate right now. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. No mind has perceived the things that God has in store for you and for your family. Children are going to be reconciled this year to their parents. Broken marriages, I believe, will be restored. Wayward children will return home. Stuck situations will become unstuck. Physical and emotional healing 
is going to occur. I need to hear somebody say amen right now. This is what's going to happen this year. Family members are going to give their lives to Jesus. But you know, I believe that this is going to happen when it's unlocked by somebody who will not settle for less. And, and this is what I want to challenge you right now as I conclude. Would you do me a favor? Do me a favor right now. I want you to just write down three names or three things that you're trusting God for in your family this year. Three impossible situations. I want you to just write them down right now. Maybe you don't have time to write down in full, but you can just write in, in short form in a way that you will note it. Write on your phone, write on your notebook if you're listening to this with a notebook. What are three impossible situations that you are trusting God for in your family in 2021? And I want you as you write those things to say about them, Lord, my healing is found in you. Jesus, son of David, I will not give up. I will not give in. I will keep praying this whole year. I'm going to hold on to you. I'm going to pray every day until I see something happen. You know, our 21st, our 21 day fast that ends today was just a beginning. There's so much more ahead. It was just setting us up. It was training. The game begins now. This is when we move into the space where we trust God for miracles. Some of you, by the way, you're going to do other fast this year. In fact, there's some of you, God is going to call you to do a 40 day fast this year for the sake of your family, for the sake of those impossible breakthroughs. We're going to pray until something happens. You know, that's what PUSH stands for. Pray until something happens. And I want us to just trust God for the impossible in our families. Come on, say, say it with me, somebody. Don't give up. Never give in. Somebody else say it again. Don't give up. Never give in. I want to conclude our series next week. And we're going to be sharing testimonies. We're going to be hearing what God has done. So if you have a testimony, if you have something you'd like to share with us that God has done over this season, please share it with us. We'd love to just read some of them. We're going to find ways to just glorify God. It's been a fantastic beginning of the year and a foreshadow of the year that is to come. And I just want to trust God that even as we've trusted Him, that there are going to be answers. Even this week, you will experience some answers to some of those prayers you've been praying. But as we conclude in prayer, I really believe that God wants us. He wants to build our faith up for the impossible this year. And so I'm going to ask you right now, if you just close your eyes for a second, wherever you are, just close your eyes for a second and listen to these words. Listen to this prayer that I'd like us to pray together. Agree with it as we prayed.
Right now, somebody's faith is being lifted up in this house. Somebody right now is believing God for a miracle. Somebody right now is trusting God for the impossible. Somebody right now is trusting God for something they said could never be done. Somebody right now is trusting the power of the universe. Oh God, there are things that the doctor has said cannot happen. There are things that people have said about me, but Lord, I want to touch the hem of your garment. The same God who healed back in the day is able to heal today. And right now, Lord, there's somebody trusting you who's watching right now, who's saying, God, I will hold on to you. God, I will persist. God, I will not give up. Lord, I will reach out to touch the hem of your garment. And Lord, I trust that I will be made whole. And right now I pray for you as you seek God for the impossible situations over your family, as you seek God for the impossible situations in your life. I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm calling out a faith in you right now. Something that you've never experienced before. I'm calling out a certainty in you right now. Something that you've never experienced before. Something that you've never walked in before. I'm trusting God to just tweak and change the way you see Him. That you will understand that all you need to do is just keep calling out to Him. That God's timing is perfect. That He will do things at His time that will be beautiful. That's why I speak over you right now. Oh God, I call over your people right now. I am praying for breakthrough in impossible situations. And I'm praying for a strengthening of the faith. Because maybe this is what's going on right now is a time for strengthening of the faith. I'm speaking perseverance, Lord. I'm speaking, Lord, commitment. I'm speaking that, Lord, you'd give us a perseverance of a champion. That everyone here, Lord, will be here for the long haul. We're not just here when things are going well. Even when things are not working, we have a certainty that our God has the final say. And so I speak over you right now as you go into this week. Oh, come on, somebody. Commit yourself to God. Lord, I'm going to hold on to you. Lord, I'm going to fight. Lord, I'm going to be in here. It doesn't matter how long. I've got that kind of faith that finishes. I've not the faith of just starting. I've got the faith of a finisher. Lord, I will persevere. I will do what I have to do until I see healing in my family, in my life. May God bless you. Oh my goodness, may January be a phenomenal month for you. May God answer your prayers. But more than that, may God shape in you the kind of faith that pleases Him. I speak blessing over you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say it together. Amen. Amen. Hey Mabuno, it's that time we all know and love. It's time to give. And as we give, here's another fitness tip. And you know, if you've been like me through this fasting period, this is the last day of the fast. Tomorrow, I'm excited to eat a big breakfast, eggs, bacon, how many slices of bread, and then for lunch, a steak. Like, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get in there. Do you feel like that's a good idea, Noel? No, definitely not. Uh, this is because uh, immediately after fasting, yeah. your body is very dehydrated. Okay. So first of all, what I would like you to do is to ensure that you stay hydrated by even having 1.5 to 2 liters in a day. Okay. Then also when it comes to the diet now, you cannot just come from a fast day immediately you start having the burgers, the bacons. No, 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 no. That okay. is not good. Okay. You have to ease yourself into it slowly yeah. like with the soups, okay. the veggies. Then slowly now when it comes to the protein, yeah. at least now, then you'll be okay after a week. So I, I hold off a little bit before going into ugali and, uh, and big steaks and things like those. Perfectly, perfectly. Okay, okay. So, so what I hear the professional saying is, even as you finish the fast in moderation, don't just jump right in there. And remember, just as you've stayed hydrated all through these three weeks, continue to hydrate. It's great for your body. And again, if you're looking for great fitness advice from the professionals, you can get it right here at the Zoezi Gym at the Boma Hotel. That's it, people. We love you. See you next week. Take care. God bless. When hope is lost And you find yourself broken When you can see your way oh. And all your prayers, they're unspoken. You can run to Jesus, reach out for you. He knows what you need. If you only touch the hem of his garment, yes, reach out and touch the hem of his
sky.